two men executed in Iran for blasphemy against Islam. In a chilling and shocking display of state power, Iran has delivered its grim verdict on two men accused of blasphemy, Yusuf Mehrad and Sadrullah Fazeli Zare. The sentence, death. The men were hanged at the Iraq prison in central Iran after being arrested in May of 2020 for their involvement in a telegram channel called the Critique of Superstition and Religion. Well, Mizan, an Iranian judiciary-linked news agency, described the men as promoting atheism, insulting the Prophet Muhammad, and burning a copy of the Quran. It's unclear whether Mehrad and Zare were the ones who burned the Quran or if such provocative images were merely shared on the Telegram channel. The international community has condemned the executions with the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom and Amnesty International criticizing Iran's increasing use of the death penalty against blasphemy charges as an assault on free expression and religion. Yet, despite the global outcry, the Islamic Republic has already executed 203 prisoners this year alone, reaffirming Iran's grim reputation as one of the world's top executioners. Their execution continues amidst a wave of similar rulings that have swept through the nation following the tumultuous protests of 2022, sparked by the tragic death of Masa Amini while in police custody. So, I mean, this happened very quickly over the past week. We suddenly became aware of the cases of these men, which apparently they've been in prison since 2020, or they were arrested back then, but people didn't know about them or their case. And then suddenly the information came forward very quickly, and it seemed like there was a delay on their execution for a second. And then within a few days, their execution was carried out. And um, this has been huge, obviously, in the Iranian atheist circles. And um, what can you tell us about this? Yeah, there was a major effort uh, to stop the executions um, by a lot of Iranians, both inside and outside of Iran, because the announcement came that they were being moved to the what is it called in the place where only one person is kept solitary confinement solitary confinement where they keep prisoners specifically right before execution right so when they move the prisoners into that place they know that they're getting for execution so after that happened there was a major push on social media um to to raise as and the word the, the the amount of notice that we all got about this was so so small like the the announcement first of all we didn't even knew about these guys which is a shame like we figured out these people even exist two or three days before they died um so there wasn't any at opportunity for mobilization to stop the executions and guys sometimes mass mobilization and international pressure works it's not like there's nothing we can do there is sometimes enough pressure would be able to stop the executions right we literally so, got sohail arabi's death sentence for the same thing commuted yes exactly it took years exactly. but it happened and this is this is why Unfortunately, the family of these people made a mistake, okay? Because the Islamic Republic tells the family that don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Uh, they're going to get released. Uh, don't tell the media. It's going to only make the, the case worse if you tell the media. And sometimes the families fall for it. Um, the actual advice is to always, always, always tell the media when they, your loved ones are getting arrested. Um, so there wasn't enough time but even with the short amount of time that we got there was a mass movement online and in iran to go in front of the prison and that initial push was enough to to change the date of the execution okay by one day because there was there was so much pressure and they did but eventually they they they, they executed them and 
here's the thing now because it and it, the Islamic Republic has learned how to do these executions to not get an, an international pressure because if they announce it and there's like a couple of months until the execution that few months is going to be like on the news all the time that Iran is the Islamic Republic does these kind of things but they know if you have only two days and they're executed and there's nothing you could do they pay less of a price because now no, nobody's talking about it anymore because it's over because there's nothing you could do they're dead so our job is to make this low price higher so just because it's over if we don't talk about it then if we if this is not if the world doesn't recognize what's happening these people didn't harm anybody these people just shared their views online that's all they did and now they're dead because of it you should have seen the message the sister posted on social media right before the executions, begging people, begging people to come in front of the of the prison. I should I, maybe I, I saw it, but it. I can't should, read it. I should grab it. Should I Do should I, I read it? Yeah. Do you I want me to it. go find it? No, no, I have it. I have it because okay. we posted it on a. Uh, we posted it on our Persian speaking um, YouTube channel just to get as much attention as we can. So here it is. So, yeah, we shared it uh, everywhere and many other people did. And this message by itself was enough to get a lot of people moving, right? So mm -hmm. this is the sister of one of the people of Yusuf, one of the people who were executed just uh, one day before he was eventually executed, right? So she says, hi, I am Yusuf's sister. Uh, like tell everybody that tomorrow three in the morning before the morning as on come and stand in front of the prison, come in front of the prison. The reason why she's saying before the morning was on, and this is, this is this, like, let me tell you how disgusting this is. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. execute people right at the morning azan. Azan is the Islamic call to prayer. So the, the, the time of the executions are at the same time of the morning azan. I don't know, this regime is just trying so hard to make people hate, hate Islam. Mm -hmm. Nobody like the 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 uh, the shouts of uh, the the recitation of Allah Akbar in the morning prayer is associated with these people dying, being executed, with the worst type of execution imaginable. I don't know. I don't think any government in the world does a more brutal type of execution right now. Like China has a lot of executions right now, but they don't torture you to death in iran they hang you but not in the same way that you watch see in movies like in the wild wild west where a trap where your door just opens under your they don't break you know, your neck if, yeah so the way the, the way that you see in movies in the wild wild west when they hang you there's a trap door that opens under your feet and you just drop and your neck breaks and you die right away they don't do that in iran they put a they, they put the noose around your neck and they lift you so you slowly die you slowly suffocate to death people have been the pressure on your on your neck is so high some people chew out their own tongues okay the, uh, the, for, some people have taken so long to die the doctor keep, comes and keeps checking and keep checking whether you still have vital signs and if you still have vital signs they go away and they keep leave you there until the doctor confirms that you're dead and some people have lasted for so long so she continues it's like please please we tried everything nothing works like like they told us that tomorrow before the azan before the uh, morning before the morning recitations to the call to prayer the azan they they will end it like people tell, tell people to help us we are heading towards the iraq prison the prison like 
هر جا میشه اعلام کنیم بیاین like, like she says please be, please be our voice say this anywhere you tell this anywhere you can and he, as you know it didn't work it didn't work and now they're dead they're dead so and their crime was that they they talked they had a telegram channel and they were sharing content against islam and let me tell you something about these two you can see their pictures here let me share these pictures these are the two okay while while they were doing these things they were owners of like major some telegram channels with anti-islamic content right they while they were still alive their call out for their execution was already unmentioned by because they were anonymous but there were some imams that put out the call out for whoever is managing these telegram channels to be executed so they were alive mm. knowing they, while they were alive they were knowing that people they saw their own call out for their execution and they were doing this inside iran and they continued doing what they were doing like these are people who believed so much in what they were doing that knowing how what big of a risk they're taking and they still did it and they were continuing to do it knowing knowing the price that they might pay for it one day Sorry, it makes me really emotional when you put it like that because, you know, I think about um, all my friends that still live in Iran, like that I talk to in our Atheist Republic community and on our Discord channel and stuff. And it's just scary to think about how close some of them have come to something like this. And I also think about all my friends who had to give up everything that they've known in a country and culture that they love because they have to be protected from this. <sighs> It was interesting though, Armin. I feel like the this I don't know, I could be wrong. I feel like this execution or these executions, I got the sense that it kind of hit you a little bit differently than I don't know, some of the other stuff that's been happening because when you told me that they actually carried out the execution, you basically use the phrase like they took two of us yeah what do you think it was about this that hit you differently i haven't seen you react like that in a long time you know i rarely feel tribal you know yeah but i you know i got a sense of in these like i got a sense of how it feels to feel like somebody that is part of your movement you know and this was like one of those first times that i like kind of one of the few times that i felt that like these were these were people in our movement these are people who are doing who are activists against islam so this felt you know this hit harder because i felt like this these were of us these were two two of us two of our uh, you know let me show you something like this is what people are writing on the wall because of these executions it says go to azana sob sobhetun people mm. write this on the wall which is like shit it basically means i shit on your morning prayer or shit on your morning call to prayer 
because this is what the morning call to prayer is associated with with executions. I with saw one girl. I posted on my Instagram stories, um, and she was spray painting it on the wall. Um, the translation was like the your morning call to prayer is our death hymn. Mm. Yeah. And in response, there were a lot of people who, including myself, who started desecrating the Quran and like is to show like, is this what you're trying to stop? Because they mm -hmm. desecrated the Quran. I mean, they I mean accused of burning the Quran and desecrating the Quran or insulting your prophet. So in response, there was a there was a major response of many people who come out and like burn the Quran, uh, flush the Torah and down the toilet. I don't know if you want to see the reaction of people. I don't know. I don't want to. A lot of them were like in, involved in a lot of other things that I can't show on YouTube. But there were so many, so many people that came out in masses and desecrated the Quran. They're like if the, if you are killing people because of this. Hear some more of that. Also, there was this uh, viral um, drawing that went around in response, which was this, which is the, mm. the minaret of a mosque, which is like where you do the call to prayer. So they they drew this on top of it. You know, put yeah. this on top of it as a response. Oh, this one, here's the caption. The caption like Bahar Azon Bahar um, yeah, so they're saying that for every call to prayer in the morning, there, a new tragedy happens, um, which is actually close to the truth right now because they are executing a lot more people these days. It's not just these two. Like, I don't, and I don't know exactly why, because you would, I, I, I could tell you what the explanation is. You would think that with all this anti-government protests and all these people angry, they would stop the executions a little bit. It seems like not a good time to execute people because people are angry and people are coming at the government and executing people is just going to get more people angry. So why are they increasing the number of executions? Like I, I read they're executing one person for every six hours. I, they were at, at, at one point. Yeah, it's huge. They really ramped up the number of executions, right? So, um, what some theories suggest that they want to show that they are still in power. Like, people don't think that we're backing down. Like, we still have, we're still in a position to, to put you in your place. That's what the understanding is. And, but, in there's a there's a response that people are having that I could talk about if you want as well because mm -hmm. there's a there's a new hashtag that is now going around Twitter uh, with the name uh, that says Jahan Zamin Gerde, right? And I could show you what this is about. Zamin Gerde means mm, the Earth is round. Do you do you know what that's referring to? It's basically so just saying what is it because the quran says that the earth is flat like a bed no 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 it means what come what goes around comes around huh. so yeah so it's like we will like what all the things you're doing to us one day we will like there will be revenge that like, you will pay for all of this with blood it's a um, I, there's a lot of tweets about this right now. Like people are posting the pictures of the the morality police running over um, some uh, a, a mother who her child was being arrested, right? Uh, and then in response, another I, I don't I don't want to show that because and then right next to a video of them running over a mullah to show like this will. Again, I'm not endorsing any of this. Like, and again, I, this is on YouTube, so I can't show you the video. But people are saying the, are, the earth is round, like Zamin mm -hmm. And this tweet, this went viral when the mother of Kian Pirfalak posted a tweet of her son, Kian. So Kian was a nine-year-old boy who was killed uh, during the protest by the regime. Nine-year-old boy, right? 
so Kian's mother, this is her, right? So she came out um, and oh, she posted. Her earrings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so she's. <laughs> so her earrings are rainbow because Kian. Um, Kian's favorite favorite phrase was in the name of the god of the rainbow. So that phrase has now become a revolutionary phrase, and she wears rainbow earrings in 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 his name, right? To re to remember him, right? But she posted a video on Twitter uh, with the hashtag "The Earth is Round," like to to remind the mullahs that you know we're still we're still oh Susie Susie left. So you let me know when you're back because I want you to see this video that I'm about to share. Susie? I'm here. Susie. Okay. All right. Which, let, let, hold on. So, yeah, here. So this is the one on the right is Kian. So she posted this with... Let me unmute this. Oh, hold on one second. Are you Vorans? I mean, Gerde. So she posted this with the question Is the earth really round? Like, will, like, basically asking the people the question Will you get the revenge for my son? So, so like asking, so it's an indirect threat. Is the world really round, right? So here's. So it's just Kian with her, with his brother, and. This just reminded this just when she posted this, it just broke so many people's heart. Just reminding people of what the regime had took away, right? And that's when the hashtag went viral. And let me actually show you maybe a, a, a drawing that oh here, actually, this is the drawing that maybe represents what they're talking about when they're saying is the earth round, right? So basically what, what goes around comes around. That's what they mean. Oh, and the, and here it says like, in the in in the blood up on the top left it says they say the earth is round. Migan Migan Geras, like they say it's it just says they say it's round. That's what it means. So now this is this is going this is an intimidation. The people are saying that you but you are showing with these executions you're showing that your teeth are sharp. Well, let us show you what we have. So it's a, it's a promise that we will bite back. Yeah, so Bread of Life is saying, what does it mean in the name of the God of the Rainbow? So like basically, Keon, this little boy, you know, instead of saying like in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, um, instead of saying it, you know, like the, towards the islamic the arabic way he was a child saying like in the name of the god of the rainbow like it was him he just started this video talking about like kind of this imaginary god that he made right and um it but it was also in its own way like un islamic right to be saying that about this rainbow god instead of actually allah and at um Kion's funeral, his mom told everyone to not read the Quran for her child because he hated the Quran and he never wanted to read it. And when she announced that to the crowd, everyone started cheering. And um, and so in the name of the God of the Rainbow is just kind of like a way to remember Kion and his legacy because he had this little rainbow God that he had for himself. And so his symbol is rainbows. Um, and so you people make a lot of art with him with this rainbow or this little boat invention that he made since he was into robotics and technology and stuff um so it's like a way to remember him and um in the local iranian uh group that i'm involved with in my city um sometimes when they're giving presentations or speeches to local politicians 
um, the women in my group will even start what they say with in the name of the God of the rainbow. And it makes me cry every time. Um, yeah. Um, so it's become like a very powerful symbol. Um, and plus rainbows come out after rainfall. They come out after a storm. Yeah. And, and it has become like in Iran, you're expected to always say, in the name of God before you start anything or say anything. And now a lot of people, um, it's become an act of protest to, to when they start saying something. And that's how they say in the name of God. They say in the no in name of the God of the rainbow. It has just saying that has become an act of protest. So whenever you see somebody on TV or somebody like making an announcement and starts with in the name of the God of the rainbow, they're referring to Kian. um yeah i'm sorry that we had to start off the show with such a heavy note but it's really important that we talk about it and remember these two men yusuf and Sodrullah, who were taken from us from our community as yeah. a whole yeah yeah anyways unfortunately the next news is also well Unless it's less distressing. Um, can we, should we go on to, oh, to the next news? But we have some super chats that I have to read. So, but I, should oh, we go? Oh, yeah, we can go to the super mm -hmm. chats. Okay. All right. So, Secular Sakai is saying, Iran will be free. The mullahs cannot stop it. I hope so. Um, I don't want to be that sure about it because if we're so sure, I feel like it's going to make a lot more people complacent. Right? It's mm. not a certain thing. It's not a certain thing. It's something that we have to know that it's not certain so that we make more make more of an effort. I think if a lot of I mean, I don't I'm a secular guy, I'm not saying that you're saying is bad. Like obviously it's good to have hope, right? But I also want to make sure that a lot of people um in Iran, the reason why it took so long, I think, is because a lot of people in Iran thought this is a certain thing. So it, it caused mm -hmm. a lot of inaction because other people were going to do it anyways, right? So if mm -hmm. more people understand that this is not certain, then more people would be motivated to join and do something about it. But yeah. Also, he gave us a super sticker, which is Thank a rainbow. Oh, Which is a rainbow super sticker. We can see it here on the screen, but it's a rainbow yeah. super sticker. Mustafa is Thank saying you. there's no he in Bismillah, but good job with the pronouncing. Did I really put a he in Bismillah? <laughs> no, you said Bename Bename Khoda. There is uh, you said he? No, oh, okay. but I didn't say it in oh. Persian. I said <laughs> yeah. in, in Arabic. Anyways, yeah, I, see, yeah. here's the thing. I learned how to say he, and then I just put it in everything now, even when it's not there. I finally learned how, <laughs> and then <laughs> once I get my okay down, it's over for you guys. <laughs> yeah. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.